So you're looking to turn your shred sled into a super shredder. You're wanting to go full enduro. If that sounds like you, then maybe the new, new geometry trend of combining a slacker head tube angle with a reduced offset fork is exactly what you're looking for. Transition Bikes really brought this geometry concept into vogue with their SBG geometry bikes. Again, combining a relatively slack head tube angle with a reduced offset fork to create what is a really capable bike, but a bike that still maintains its maneuverability. So I'll show you effectively what happens when you go with a reduced offset fork. If you'll imagine that this is obviously the fork and this is the top tube of your mountain bike, you can see then that slackening out the head tube, you can see how that actually lowers the bike somewhat, but it also going from that stock position, you can see how it lengthens the wheelbase of the bike. And so if you go to an extreme, for me personally, I feel like the steering gets somewhat sloppy, but if we maintain that same head tube angle, but we simply bring the fork back, just as the reduced offset would do, you can see how maintaining the same angle, but bringing the fork back essentially raises the bike back up, but it also reduces back the wheelbase of the bike. It's universally accepted that a slacker head tube angle will give the rider much more confidence when bombing downhill, but it can create an unbalanced feeling when the front wheel feels like it's much further out in front of you. Thus the reduced offset fork to bring the front wheel back slightly to create a much more balanced feeling ride. I first got to experience this in 2018. I spent an entire day on the Transition Scout. It was amazing how much capability they could pack in such a short travel 29er trail bike. I've now been on the version two Santa Cruz high tower since August, 2019. It's a super well-balanced feeling bike that is also very capable. Definitely want to check out my review of the version two high tower. And so I'm personally sold on the idea of reduced offset fork geometry. If you have a bike and you're wanting to increase its downhill capability, but you already feel like it's on the longish side, this might be a really good combo. If you're running a bike that you feel like is already a little bit too short for you, Perhaps just going with the angled headset could be enough of a change to really get you where you want to be. And so you can actually do this in a stepwise fashion, just like I've done. If you love the upgrade with just the angled headset, then I would just leave it alone with that. If you feel like after the angled headset that your steering is too off center and wobbly, try to pick up on eBay, pink bike, or otherwise a takeoff of one of these reduced offset CSUs that will fit your fork. In application, when you bring the front wheel back slightly, this allows the rider to position their weight much more easily over the front tire, which for most riders, myself included, gives the feeling of increased confidence with cornering because you're able to weight up the front tire for more traction. And to me, it just makes for a much better cornering and handling and maneuvering bike. Particularly if you have a 29er trail bike and it has a 51 degree offset and you have trouble weighting up the front end for cornering, perhaps going with a reduced offset fork could be a great way to go. I definitely wouldn't recommend just going out and buying a reduced offset fork and paying all that money, especially being unsure if this is an appropriate upgrade. But certainly if you can pick up a used CSU, you can find them used for typically anywhere from $75 to $150. And so it could be a relatively cheap upgrade. You can basically do a front fork maintenance or service along with it. And so it's really not that hard to do if you can find one for cheap. So step one, get the fork off from the bike. You're then going to need to remove your crown raise. If you've already installed the angled headset, like I have with the works components, you're gonna need to take off the crown raise so that you can put it onto the new uh, CSU of the fork. And so I found that the works components crown raise, actually you can just get it off by hand, just like you can put it on by hand. Uh, if yours is really stuck, you may have to take it to a shop and let them use a crown race puller. Uh, but take the crown race off and save that because we're going to put it on the new one. There, first step, you want to remove the air. You want to take a Shimano style cassette lock ring tool or most other forks will use a 24 mil socket wrench. And we want to remove the air spring top cap. You want to just take that counterclockwise the bottom of the fork you want to remove the rebound adjust knob you don't want to take that all the way out just loosen that set screw it should slide out and then you want to take a five mil allen you want to remove the nut at the bottom of the damper and the air spring side you want to just back these off about three or four turns 
And go ahead and get your bucket for oil ready. This is where we're gonna drain the oil out of the lowers. And once you've got that backed out three or four turns, leaving your Allen key in there, you wanna take a rubber mallet and give this a few firm taps to try to release that damper shaft. And you'll feel it sort of give and you may have to go back and revisit that. From there, then you want to lower the fork Then you want to take the nuts out of the bottom. I've already got it on the air spring side. Should be able to bring that on off. You may have to kind of give it one of those and there you'll see the oil draining out. Then you can go ahead and slide your lowers all the way off. Then want to remove your compression knobs. And for this Pike Ultimate, you basically remove the low speed compression knob and then the high speed knob just pops off. And then if you're doing this like on a Pike or Lyric Ultimate like me, you'll use your cassette lock ring tool to be able to remove the actual damper. And there's your Charger 2.1 damper for the suspension nerds. So to remove your air spring, you have a lock ring at the bottom. You definitely want to be wearing safety glasses for this step in case this lock ring gets away from you. Once you have your lock ring out, you want to take a piece of shop towel or paper towel rag and grab a hold of the foot nut, try to get more of it exposed. You want to get a decent purchase on there and just pop that right out. Just be sure you transfer this over to the new CSU because we're now ready to make the swap. There you can see on the left, the old CSU. You can definitely see how it's offset much more than the one on the right. And so here I've got the new CSU mounted up in the repair stand. The fork offsets to the front of the bike. If you're like me and you pick this up to use, you definitely want to uh, clean up the inner diameter of the CSU tubes. I recommend at this point going ahead and sliding on a little sag ring indicator just so that you don't forget that slide it all the way up and out of the way these newer rock shocks forks they use dynamic seal grease uh, the older ones use shram butter a lot of people use slick honey or slick oleum and then you also want to grease up uh, the seal head here but just enough to get a light coating on the inner tube and i'll run it up and in a few times you don't want to do too much so that you don't clog up the port that regulates the air from the negative to the positive side but again, just a light coating. And uh, once you feel good about both areas having light coating between the air piston and the seal head, and then you wanna just reinsert the air piston, like so. And do not, I repeat, do not forget to replace your circlet. Uh, two hands, one to stabilize the ring, the other to pull it together, and you can kind of just push it into place. And then on the damper, I did take and actually grease the seal there at the top of the damper. You want to just carefully reinsert that. Be sure that you've got it nice and clean before you reinstall it. And you can just by hand get that to go as far as you can by hand. It should go several turns by hand. And while you're here, go ahead and throw back on the compression knobs. And then we'll just reinstall the air spring top cap. Again, starting that by hand, being careful to not cross thread. At this point that you want to reinstall the lowers, just be sure that you've done correctly. The air spring is on the left side of the bike. The offset is going to be going forward or up in this case. And then the crown of the fork is also going to be going to the top side. And so you just want to carefully slide these back on. Then you want to put the appropriate suspension oil back into the lowers. Reinstall the nuts at the bottom of each lower leg. Throw back on my rebound adjuster knob. Putting a nice wipe down. So there I have a reduced offset fork. All I have to do now, slap it back on the bike. That is how to, to change your CSU to give you a reduced offset fork. You definitely gonna need to check out part two of this video. Where I actually throw this thing on the Kona Hanzo with it slacked out and the reduced offset fork so that you can hear my actual ride impressions and how it affects the ride of an already awesome bike, the Kona Hanzo tried and true steel 29er hardtail. Please consider subscribing to the channel and as always, thanks for watching.